Tom, the thing that I would like to reflect upon for just a second is in our relationship, which has been a long relationship. And it began, I think, almost 40 years ago. When did we first meet? 1981. How did we meet? I was a student to be visiting the University of Dallas in May of 81. Okay. And I was awaiting, you know, the tour. Sitting, sitting on the mall, and you just kind of walked by, and I just thought, I wonder who that is. <laughs> no, I did. Really? Even, yeah, even then, the way you carried yourself was very, just, you just kind of, who was that? <laughs> really? Really? Yeah. Well, the interesting thing about, that was when, that's your first memory of me. My first memory of you is a phone call from a woman named Charlotte. Does that ring a bell, Charlotte? Charlotte rings a bell. No, my, his mother, uh, your mother. And uh, anyway, so she called me and she said, I have a student, this is Charlotte. I have a student there, I want you to talk to him. It was, you know, it was almost that quick. So I, you know, typically I would have followed through with that. So I, I, I think I must have saw you in the cafeteria or somewhere. I said, hey, you wanna come, you wanna come by and talk? And uh, I remember that meeting so vividly because you sat there on the sofa in my office and I said, well, Tom, um, can I do anything for you? That's what I used to say. Can, what can I do for you? Silence, <laughs> silence, 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 silence. It went on and on and on. But anyway, that was the beginning. And what it's turned into is the most amazing source of, what would I call it, spirit, life? Mm -hmm. We've been through so much of growing and sharing stuff. It's just amazing. And um, it never ceases to, to amaze me what happens when we're together. I mean, something always comes to fruition that's been simmering and working in my psyche or in my soul. Yes. And, um, and, you know, and what you ended up doing is, is going, getting into psychology and... Uh, because you thought about being a priest, didn't you? I was, yes, I was in seminary for a year, as you were my vocational director. That is true, I was, yes. and it was, of course, my influence. No, anyway, <laughs> but uh, it's true that uh, you, you did that, and then you went to psychology. Yes. And I, it reminds me that when I was a young priest, before I met you, I, uh, I remember those summers at UD, I was able to do, get away to be freer than you would if you were in a parish, and I remember going, to a place called Pecos, a monastery in New Mexico. And I remember being there and I was gifted with having a spiritual director that was then the abbot, Abbot David, and he, I remember one thing he said that was so, you know, when you hear something and you just know it's true and you've never thought of it before, it's just like, oh, of course that's true. He said, if you're gonna be a good priest, Don, you have to know God, you just have to know him. And then that's not enough. You can say, I know God, but if you don't know people, humans, if you don't know your species, you know, you won't, you can't do a good job. And so that's when, that was before I met you, I think, and, and but what, what it awakened in me was a interest in psychology, which I've always had, and then I started, I had Jim Hillman, a famous archetypal psychology, his wife, Pat Berry, were at UD, and, and I thought, well, you know, it would look cool if I was in therapy. That's the way back. Right. And it started with, with, with Jungian analysis and dreams. And that started it. And when I think of our relationship, um, it's not unusual for me at all to spend time with you and say, hey, I had this dream last night, Tom. <laughs> what do you think? And, and yours are doozies. And mine are doozies. But one of the things that I'd like us to talk about and... Uh, because it's so fresh in my mind. We had seen a film about a man who had been really, I would say, lost, you know, in a, in a, a way of life that was destructive. And I made some comment about, God, don't you just long for that person to get better? Don't you just want something? You, don't you want to fix them, <laughs> give them something? You're a therapist, I'm a priest, we're supposed to take care of people, we're supposed to get them out of all that destructive behavior. And you may you said something, and what'd you say? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said that it would be, and I and I believe this. I believe as a therapist, right. in the work that I do in, in helping people heal, that it would be presumptuous of me to have a desire for them 
other than a desire that they have for themselves. Does that make sense? Yeah, but it's so funny because the, what you did when you did that, you said, no, I don't have any desire for them. And then when you say something like that, and I trust you so much, it, it throws me off because I said, no, no, I, one of the great things about me, I'm a, I love people and I want them to change. I want them to have something. And on, without my realizing it, what I was, was saying that you were picking up on, I think, is that, well, what is it you're going to give them? Right. So what I realized you were doing is chipping away at something in me that I was somehow holding on to. It was control. It was my ego saying, Don, you are really wonderfully gifted and you will be honored if you are gifted in the eyes of others by giving them what they need. Yes. I, my ego is saying, well, I know what they need. Right. So it's sort of like I see somebody that out there and I say, you know, what you need is religion. What you need is God. But I was, in my mind, I know what I was doing is having a sense of my value was in somehow determining what somebody needed. And that was, the part of that that you nailed me on was that was for me. For you. And right. when you said that, I don't know how to describe this. What happened? Well, I was like this. And can, I, can you talk? And I was angry at you. I was really angry. I was pissed off. I said, you know, what do you, you know, and, and I, this happened once before in our life when you told me you didn't need anyone. That really threw me off, you know, and I thought, what, it, no, one of my greatest gifts is I need people. Mm -hmm. I need their love. That's, and if I can satisfy that love, that's my whole reason for being. Exactly. Satisfy the needs of other people and I'll go straight to heaven. I'll be happy because I'm fulfilling their needs. And all this was, was subtly, you were able to be used to, in a way that said, watch out, Don, because there's so much ego in that. Right. But, but it also gets back to the, the core thing I really want to talk about. And that is the work of loving. Right. The work is not what I thought it was. I really believe that the thought of being a loving person was to, to, to meet someone, to, to have a, someone in my life, and I look at them and I say, I know what they need. I'm going to decide what they need. They need this. They need this. But it was so subtle in a way because I would guess at what they needed. You know, I would just guess. I, it was not based in anything even about knowing them that much. Well, I should say, I do know, some, like in my family, I'm thinking what my sister needs, what my brother needs. You know, I should, you know. And how would I say this? The feeling of power that comes over me when I think I have found something that somebody needs and I am the vehicle through which God gives it to them, I rise up and I become effective and strong. <laughs> And, you know, and I'm looking at that, and when you kept saying, this is what you kept saying, when you work with somebody in your office, when you're working with them, you, you recognize that the very thing that is going to draw them to you as an instrument of transformation is you have in your heart a desire to be transformed. Right. And they're in the presence of somebody who is engaged in the work of being loved by God and trying to love in return. And you say that that's the thing that heals them, yes. which is blew me away because it means that they are the only ones that know what they need. They're the ones that are going to know. And so, if you listen, anytime I have a patient come in and sit down in a chair, like across, just mm -hmm. like this, like mm -hmm. we're doing right now, if you listen wholeheartedly and intently long enough, they will tell you exactly what it is they need without even knowing it. Huh. They will tell you. And then you... And it's usually not what it is that I think they need. I never tell people. They say, well, what do you think I need? I say, I have no idea what you need. Yeah. But let's talk about that. Because if it doesn't come from within that place, from within them, it's not worth anything. That makes a lot of sense to me, why the difference between preaching as a kind of directive to people, do this, don't do that, to witnessing it 
I don't know. You, it's great what, what I'm saying. You don't know. There's not, it's, it's not something you're doing. No. It's something, it's something it's, you are. Something you are. That's it. Okay, that's it. Yeah. So if I'm up there as a human being like them, wanting to be filled with divinity, wanting to share it with people, that is more a message that they get than anything I'm saying. Right. Absolutely. Wow. Because innately, unconsciously, that's what we all want to hear. The truth. That we're love. Right. That we are loved. Right. And so, we know it. We all know it. On some level, we all know it. That's why there's so much struggle. Right. Well, now what I want to do is give that to people. <laughs> and, but, you know, oh, boy. <laughs> no, 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 but, but, but again, but it's back to this thing, the work. Right? Right. That's, the work is not fixing people, doing things for people. The work is what? Doing it for yourself. Allowing God to do it for you. and Allowing transformation constantly, 24-7, to be happening within yourself. Every moment is an opportunity for transformation. And if you're in that disposition, you are going to attract people to the work that is theirs. Because innately they desire it too. We all have a place inside of us innately that desire that, to continue to grow in love. Right. That's what we're made for. You said that this morning. That's what we're made for. Wow, that's cool. That is very cool. Well, I love. <laughs> I love the way. I love the way.